Well, I'll never forget to my dying day one Christmas Eve that we poked our heads into a public house and there was a fiddler inside playing away and a monkey perched on his shoulder. And I must admit it into the grave admission to make it was my first time ever seeing a monkey. <laughs> well, up on the counter, on the little shelf on the side of the counter, there was about a half a finger of whiskey left in the bottom of a glass where a fellow had gone out in the yard. And the monkey... <laughs> He took this between his two paws, as neat as ever was saw, and he knocked it back, and of course there was the devil's own kicking whiskey at that cane. <laughs> and he bounced off the counter, opened the gaslight, and you never saw such antics as he was performing up there. And we were all breaking our sides laughing at him, except one man, a rather grumpy man, I always knew him to see him back there around the town. He never smiled in his life. He had a dark, swarthy face, and he had a big pair of eyebrows that could put him fencing cows out of cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, the monkey resented all this. But he wasn't uh, paying any attention to him, so he hopped down, he landed into the crown of the, of, the, of the man's hat, and he walked around the top wood, and he put his head out, and he looked into his eyes. I go where that, you castler, said the grumpy man. And this small the world is in you. Well, the monkey got right vexed, and he hopped off from the counter, and what did he do? He put his tail into the pint of porter, the man was drinking, and he wouldn't take his tail out. So the man went over, the grumpy man, he went over to the fiddler, he was playing away with his back to him, and he prodded him like that, and he said, uh, Do you know, he said, that the monkey have his tail in my pint? I don't, said the fiddler, but if you did, if you bars of it, I might be able to play it for you. <laughs> Storytelling goes back to the time when man was living in a cave, very first man, and when they'd be out hunting for food during the day and come back in the evening and have their supper and sit at the mouth of the cave, one man could describe what went on during the day and the dangers they were in, and he was the first storyteller. Storytelling was always a part of the human condition. You can be full sure and certain that the Red Indians, when they sat around the fire at night after a day's hunting and had their supper and smoked their pipe of peace, there was one man there that could tell the story of the tribe. And the same way they say about the, the, the Arabs, when the, when the, the tribe train the, the the train the Arab train halted at night in the desert and the camels were put around in a circle and the fire was lit and they had their supper. There was a man there who could tell of the glories of the past and the great men who one time walked the world. And they do say that the Arabs and the Irish are the best storytellers. But I don't know where do you leave the Jews? The Jews were good storytellers too and they have two testaments to prove it. <laughs> so um, uh, the, the storytelling was always associated with the countryside but I'm sure you had storytelling in the cities too. But I associated mostly with around the fire, sitting at the fire at night and uh, the storyteller would sit by the fire and uh, the light of the fire would light up his face and the faces of the people who were listening to him. One very wet day there was a woman going to town and she met another woman coming home a mile this side of the ford. Bridges weren't very widespread at that time in Ireland. And the woman going said to the woman coming, and we all know how quick a woman's mind can work when she's in top gear. <laughs> the woman going said to the woman coming, she said, were you in town? What time is it? What price were eggs? Is the flood high? <laughs> And the woman coming said, I was a quarter to twelve, one and nine pence. I was at confession, girl. <laughs> Brian McMahon had a story about uh, a great storyteller who was in, in, um, uh, in living in Listowel, and the people used to come into him and listen to him at night. Now, he was a blind man, and he was a wonderful, a wonderful uh, man at his art. But the good people who were getting out wireless for the blind at that time, as it was called, it were, it was presented a new wireless to every blind person. And they presented a new wireless to him, and the, the new radio was put up on the shelf of the window, and the people turned it on, and sad as it may seem, they turned from the storyteller and listened to the radio. <laughs> 